Thank you, sir, for giving this me this opportunity to share my thoughts. And thank you to Dr. Rita Chauhan also to uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with the participants. Uh, so uh, good evening, participants. Uh, uh, today, uh, under this program, I am going to discuss, I am going to share my ideas on MSD 016 strategies and models for sustainability under the block strategies for sustainable development. And the topic which I'm going to discuss today is sustainable infrastructure, right? So it is there in your module. Uh, so I hope you have gone through the module. And uh, uh, this is the a broad outline of my uh, presentation, what I'm going to talk today. So uh, I will start with a brief introduction of the topic. Then uh, we'll discuss why should infrastructure be sustainable, why we are talking about the sustainability in this infrastructure sector, though we it was uh, it was very much restricted with the environment and social sustainability now, but we are now also talking about this infrastructure and economic sustainability, right? So uh, after that, uh, I will uh, briefly discuss about sustainability science and its importance with respect to infrastructural development and how to develop intra infrastructure and uh, developing infrastructure is a huge task and how it has to be in tune with the environmental sustainability on that we will have some focus and then there are certain indicators which has to be uh, followed which has to be integrated while developing infrastructure that has also to be taken care of when we are uh, discussing about the sustainable infrastructure and finally we'll see that what is the role of sustainable infrastructure in addressing today's urgent global challenges so today's we are uh, we are having lots of challenges and this infrastructure is one of the major challenge it is uh, like uh, we have to see it in the context of developed nation and developing nation we have to see it in the context of rich and poor we have to see it in the context of core and periphery and we have to see that how can we build a sustainable infrastructure which is for everyone which is not only for the rich people which is not only for the one section of society so uh, this is my brief outline what i'm going to discuss today so my topic uh, my presentation will be uh, will be including the other informations also, uh, which is not there in your booklet, which have been provided to you by your organization, institution. And finally, I will uh, conclude the topic. So let's start. See, uh, these are some points. See, uh, when we talk about infrastructure, uh, it's, it's, it's as old as the earth, is, earth itself, right? And uh, when since time immemorial, whether it's uh, uh, primitive time, whether it's uh, you say uh, medieval time, whether it's uh, present or this Anthropocene era, people have developed, people, institutions, and community has developed various types of infrastructure for their ease of life. Right in the primitive time, we can see that. People started uh, living, or pe people started making, you know, uh, caves, and they 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 stayed there for uh, for uh, you know safety and all. Later on, when we progressed uh, in medieval time, we can see lots of infrastructure in the and uh, nice marvelous architecture, architectural buildings, uh, temples, and uh, uh, many uh, infrastructure like road in the medieval period. You can see this Grand Tank Road. Uh, so lots of infrastructure is being done, constructed, created throughout the history of time. But why this term sustainable infrastructure? So I, I think all are aware that this sustainable development or sustainability term came into existence in 1984 in WCED, World Commission on Environment Development, Birdland Commission when people realize when a group of scientists when a group of ecologists and scientists realize that our environment is under great stress and we have to take care of our environment we have to take care of our nature we have to take care of our resources 
not for only for only the present generation we have to take care of it for the further generation also future generations also so in that context when we see this infrastructure in a sustainable manner if any, any infrastructure which is not sustainable which is not going to last for many years which is not going to give us a uh, hundred percent utility is not going to be you know it's not going to be called as sustainable so infrastructure which it has to be linked with sustainability is the need of r and if i uh, define this infrastructure it can be said that that is a structural element that supports the day-to-day -day function and influences the direction of human society and how we move how we our direction is you know somewhere it is governed by our the way we built our infrastructure like for an example see today's uh, the whole world is in crisis energy crisis petroleum and non renewable resources are now uh, getting extincted or their availability is reducing day by day now we are moving more towards renewable energy sources so see solar energy is one part where people are focusing government and different different agencies are focusing in a very extensive manner right now see the solar panels which through which we process this energy solar energy what is going to happen after 20 years down the line when these solar panels will be ineffective will these solar panels will be not in use how we are going to dispose it the silicons which is being used so large volume of scrap is going to be uh, generated throughout the world which is very difficult to dispose of so can we see see solar energy everyone even when you will call solar energy people will say it's a sustainable uh, move and it promotes sustainability because it gives the energy from the solar uh, sunlight but on the other hand once we see that what is the what is what will be the final outcome of the products what what will be the final outcome of the resources which is being used to generate that energy so that part has also be to be taken into care of when we're talking about the infrastructure so uh, in other sense we can say that sustainable infrastructure is a key enable enabler of economic and social development as well as environmental sustainability and infrastructure is critical to sustainable community development our future well-being and the day-to-day -day lives of individuals broad coverage of infrastructure services promote social inclusion and equity and supports the formation of human capital so infrastructure is very important and in, when i'm saying infrastructure it is sustainable infrastructure per se so uh, in addition we can say that quality infrastructure and sometimes this uh, sustainable infrastructure also uh, termed as green infrastructure so these are the synonyms word which have been interchangeably used so quality infrastructure green infrastructure sustainable infrastructure these are the various words which have been interchangeably used so it has this infrastructure enhances the productivity and competitiveness contributing to economic growth and employment as well as facilitating international trade see uh, in primitive times when uh, when we were not having this much of advancement technological advancement and technical advancement we had a very low uh, you know low level of interaction with the world the the physical distance was too much because we were not having any means of transportation to go yeah it was there sea seaport and land route was there but that took lots of time you know to cross the hurdle to cross the mountains to cross the sea so this much interaction this much exchange of goods and you know goods and services what not there now you can see usa or europe is just 12 14 hours from india from your place so now the relative distance has been 
substantially decreased just because of the transportation network, just because of the infrastructure services. So this also promotes sustainability, sustainable trade and international trade. And it in turn, it also provides economic opportunities, green economic opportunities to, to the population of the country, right? And if I talk about this uh, major uh, infrastructure areas that uh, that are con that are crucial in sustainable development, they are energy sector, transportation, waste management, land use, and planning and governance. So, with this brief introduction, just keep in mind that infrastructure is very important, and without infrastructural development, sustainable infrastructural development no country is going to uh, develop its human capital, no country is going to increase its poor capital income, its social well-being, social equity will not will be will not be achieved until and unless we invest in this uh, sustainable infrastructure. Second thing with environmental eyes, environmental lens is very important that whatever is invented, whatever is created, whatever is constructed in any nation, in any countries, the longevity, the life, the life span of that particular infrastructure, the productivity of that particular infrastructure should be greater, should be high so that so that we can get maximum out of that, uh, uh, maximum economic profitability from that particular infrastructure and having less and lesser impact on our environment. So these keep this mind, keep these facts in your mind. So these these are the objectives. These are the objectives. Uh, uh, first objective is to classify and characterize the infra infrastructure in the context of sustainability. Second is explain the different approaches uh, of infrastructural development. And third is to understand various methodologies of infrastructural development and how we can link it with the uh, sustainable development goals. So do these two, three uh, objectives are very important. Last one is very important. Rest of the uh, factual and conceptual theoretical aspects is, is already been given in your, uh, this, uh, you can say the module. Uh, I will focus on that also and I will try to incorporate some new things, how we can relate it with the uh, Millennium Development Goals or Sustainable Development Goals, what is the role of uh, this uh, uh, sustainable infrastructure in the context of SDG and other environmental policies, right? So, uh, first, uh, uh, why we should, uh, why should infrastructure be sustainable? The first question should strike in your mind that why should infrastructure be sustainable? If infrastructure is not sustainable, what is going to happen? What kind of differences is going to be perceived by the country or by the policy maker or by an individual or community? So see, if we don't go for sustainable infrastructure of, or if the companies or community or a nation is not going to consider the sustainable infrastructure, we are going to perish. The whole humanity is going to perish, though it's not very soon, it will take some time, but the degradation, the reckless exploitation of our resources is going to make our earth infertile. We will not be in a position to survive. So what we have to do, our development, our infrastructure development should be in sync with the environmental policy in sync with the EID, ecological uh, uh, impact assessment, SIA, social impact assessment. So whatever we are doing, whatever infrastructure we are developing, it should be in sync with the EIA and SIA. Hope you know the environmental impact assessment and social impact assessment. So while implementing any project, one must integrate or one must qualify EIA and SIA, that what kind of impact of any project is going to be observed on environment 
and the society who are living in that particular project area. So uh, we can see that this sustainable infrastructure involves lots of an area of uh, activities like developing roads, building, energy and water infrastructure. And uh, it also has consideration on economic, social and environmental implications. And so many organizations and like International Institute of Sustainable Development, IAST, UNEP, United Nations Development Program, UNDP, lots of organizations uh, while going for any, while funding for any uh, developmental programs, while funding for any development of infrastructure, what they are taking care of, what kind of guidelines, or you can say what kind of vision they have, uh, this that major focus I have written here. So see, lower carbon and environmental footprints. Do whatever you want to develop, develop with certain utilities, but it should emit lower carbon and the environmental footprints should be lesser. There should be less environmental problems. There should be the impact of that developmental activity should be less. Second, protect natural ecosystem. So see, development, development of this infrastructure should be in such a way that it should not destroy the ecosystem either is tourism development or tourism infrastructure development. Like we have seen that uh, in uh, earlier uh, in the coast of Odisha and uh, Andhra Pradesh, they have developed uh, uh, tourism spots near the, near the seashore, but that has affected the land, land water, sea water intrusion that has also affected the biodiversity of that particular area. So it has been banned. So whatever development is taking place, it must be in, in line with the environmental sustainability. I will, I will, I will give you one example. See, mm, uh, you might be aware about the Coca-Cola company. So Coca-Cola company established a plan somewhere between Mysore and Bangalore. They have established a, a Coca-Cola company, this soft drink plan and they have taken all the permission, EIESI, everything they have, uh, uh, they said they will follow all the guidelines given by the government, all the clearance they have taken, but, uh, uh, and they have started their plan. After one or two years, the farmers in the nearby area, they have felt that their water table has gone down and their agriculture productivity is also gone down. So they have contacted the NGOs, they have contacted the uh, agriculture extension officers, district, uh, some NGOs, some district magistrates, and they have showed their concern that see, since last two, three years, we have declining trend. Our water table has also gone, uh, gone down. Our, this groundwater level has also gone, gone down. Our agriculture productivity is not retaining. What can, what may be the reason? So after research, it, uh, it came into uh, light that this Coca-Cola company is extracting more and more water than the permissible limit, right? So uh, suppose that uh, uh, for an example, if the uh, limit is uh, th 1000 pitcher, they might be uh, drawing more than that permissible limits. And after a period of two, three years, the water table has gone down. So see what I'm saying that such kind of environmental development or infrastructure development should not be allowed or should not be promoted. It should be cut in later on. Uh, uh, this uh, the uh, court has given the order to shut down that particular infrastructural unit, and the compensation were given to the farmers. So see, uh, you have to see that any infrastructure development should not have diverse impact or what 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 I can say the negative impact on our environment. So we have to protect our natural ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, the micro ecosystem has to be protected. Uh, next is prove resilient to changing climates, right? See, uh, whatever we are doing, uh, climate is, uh, is changing, climate change is a new phenomena since last 20, 30 years, we are observing climate change, micro climate change. So whatever we are doing, we have to, we have to check that 
what is the longevity what is the longevity of the project how many years is going to be survived so we have to sync with it with the climate change uh, uh, parameter next optimal use of natural ecosystem and their infrastructure services see ecosystem services are extreme we don't have to exploit or recklessly exploit the ecosystem services we have to maintain we have to respect the ecological values of particular ecosystem where any infrastructure development is going to take place so we don't have to 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 exploit it we have to take whatever is needed that much only we have to take it and rest we have to 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 conserve rest we have to revive reclaim and we have to to keep our ecosystem in a very healthy manner right so these are the points uh, next is move beyond compliance or core uh, labor standard and human rights we have to take care of the human rights while constructing the infrastructure and we have to uh, we have to give the wages and uh, right wages and uh, whatever is defined uh, by that particular nation that particular law has to be taken care of uh, trigger technological and industrial innovation innovation is a need of our and without technological and industrial innovation uh, we are going to uh, uh, um, what we can say we are going to uh, invest more money more energy so we have to go for the smarter way of uh, constructing any infrastructure right like uh, i will give you an example of paryavaran bhavan uh, the ministry of environment and uh, science building in delhi that is a green building so the ac is uh, very few acs are working there and uh, the building is designed in such a way that during daytime they don't need any uh, this uh, tube light the the illumination the outside illumination is enough so we have to go for the innovative buildings innovating building plans so that so that the energy consumption or the impact on our environment and nature is minimal so next is increase investment in education and research and development see education is something which is uh, which is very important see uh, there is a um, saying in china chinese uh, people say the indigenous people say if you are thinking for tomorrow plant rice if you are thinking for 10 years down the lane 20 years down the line plant tree but if you are thinking for 100 years and beyond educate women educate people if people will be educated they are going to to take decisions wisely they are going to use the resources very wisely and judiciously so education and research is the key process we have to take care we have to take care of our quality education and research practices right increase employment opportunities green jobs has to be to be you know uh, to be created and people should be promoted uh, in, in this green jobs and uh, next is this uh, fdi uh, when uh, fdi is also one of the way uh, in the developing countries especially where we can we can ask for the fdi and we can build infrastructure where where infrastructure development is very poor especially in the asia pacific region and next is uh, it is not only good for the planet it's good for the investors also if you'll go for the uh, if you'll go for the sustainable infrastructure it is good for our planet the entropy maximization process can be stopped right and those who are investing the finance uh, those who are financing this infrastructure they will be also in the profit so with this uh, i can say that uh, this uh, sustainable infrastructure is not an option it's a need of the hour. we cannot do we cannot survive we cannot move further if we are not going to consider sustainability issues in this infrastructure sector so this is uh, now I will talk about the classification of infrastructure. So uh, it is there in your booklet. Uh, it can be uh, easily uh, said that it can be easily identified, classified into two parts. First is your hard infrastructure. Second is your soft infrastructure. So hard infrastructure is the physical infrastructure like transportation, energy management, water management, communication, uh, waste management, earth monitoring and management. These are the hard or you can say hard 
infrastructure whereas there are some soft infrastructure also like institutional uh, mechanism like social uh, mechanism social infrastructure industrial uh, infrastructure cultural infrastructure these are the infrastructure which are very much important for the social development of any any population or any area right like education is there healthcare system is there uh, a financial uh, uh, mechanism is there and for this uh, uh, this cultural we can say that the concert halls the heritage building museums convention halls these all are very important they are the they are the lines on the earth about the past so uh, we have to like uh, uh, we we can say that uh, there is uh, history uh, geography or you can sustainability science without history just like a picture without frame we have to go to back we have to go back to see what kind of progression is there what kind of you no know, what kind of pathways are there from where we are leading so that has to be taken care of right so it can be uh, uh, classified into hard and soft and there are there there are resources there are there are classifications which has to be considered is there in your booklet you can see you can go through uh, uh, through different types of classification in detail. And now the next is characteristics of the infrastructure. This is very important. What are the characteristics of the important infrastructure? So if we say characteristic, what are the attributes? So see, uh, there, uh, we can see that there are, there are infrastructure first, there are infrastructures with positive impact on the environment. There are infrastructure which have a positive impact on the environment, right? And secondly, there, there are the infrastructure which has negative impact on the environment. So, uh, like uh, for an example, we can see what are the negative ones. If we, if, if I try to identify the negative one, what can be seen like uh, uh, this uh, consumption of fuels, consumption of fuels in the Himalayas, consumption of uh, 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 cutting of the trees and using it as a, um, as a fuel wood is one of the negative impact. You can see that has a negative impact on the environment. It will increase CO2 uh, proportion in, in our atmosphere. It will also create uh, problems of soil loss. It will also uh, uh uh trigger the landslide movement so there there are characteristics but what we have to focus that our infrastructure development should be in such a way that it has no it has a neutral uh, impact it has no impact negative impact though it's not possible what we can what we can uh, uh, try that there there should be minimal uh, environmental impact minimal environmental impact of any infrastructure development so see see this environment and development they are they are the they are polar opposite until and unless we exploit our environment we are not going to uh, develop any infrastructure so whatever we are getting we are getting from the environment only we are getting from the nature only see any industry iron ore industry you say coal industry or any industry you visualize that is based on our resources based on our natural resources so until unless we are going to develop any kind of infrastructure industrial infrastructure or transportation infrastructure we have we cannot develop it without the help of our natural resources so somehow it is going to impact our environment but what we have to see what we have to but to remember, keep in your own mind that the impact of this extraction, the impact, the, imp the impact should be minimal. Whatever we are taking, whatever resources we are taking from the environment, the environmental impact should be minimal. That's why there is an incorporation of uh, uh, this uh, SIA and EIA, environmental impact assessment and social impact assessment. What kind of social impact is there on uh, on the 
people of that particular area and what kind of environmental impact is there of that particular area. So characteristics uh, uh, has to be seen in this way. There are economic characteristics. See, whatever infrastructure we develop, we try to get maximum out of it. We try to get the maximum return from any infrastructure which we we develop right so see we have to be little ecocentric also we have to see with the with the nature side see this earth is not for the exploitation this is this earth is not for the accumulation of wealth as gandhiji said that this earth has enough for our need not for our greed but if you will Whatever you require, it has enough for our need. But what is going on? We are ex recklessly exploiting our resources. We are converting that resources into money and we are keeping it safe in our lockers, banks and blah, blah, blah. So no, our this consumerism culture should be, should be stopped and it should be, uh, we should adopt sustainable consumption pattern. Right. And from individual level, community level to nation level, we have to we have to start. We have to invoke sustainable consumption pattern, which has already been in his in in our sustainable development goals. That also says that we have to take care of resources. We have we don't have we don't have any right or future generation have also equal right on these resources so in this context you can see next uh, this these are the few points which i will discuss very briefly see developing infrastructure uh, means uh, see uh, uh, try to understand this way that uh, development and a decent way of life a decent life with basic needs basic uh, requirements is essential for each and everyone who is living on this earth there should be a dignified life and until and unless we develop certain basic infrastructure like drinking water electricity disposal and treatment of wastewater mobility of people and goods provision of information and communication technologies we are not going to create a human society, equitable human society. So these infrastructure can be divided into two parts. First is the basic infrastructure. Second is the large scale or long term infrastructure. Basic infrastructure are those infrastructures which is very much important for the for the poor people, have nots, those who don't have the uh, proper uh, you can say uh, food security nutrition security or the basic needs whereas there are there are there are one group or one group of nations which have enough infrastructure their per capita income is very high uh, their gdp is very high they are investing in their uh, infrastructure in sustainable infrastructure so there are there are gaps there are there are big gaps uh, I know you have heard the Brent line. There is a there's one line which divides rich countries and poor countries. Try to check on the Google, you will get. So there is one line. So south portion, the southern part, or you can say southern hemisphere, which is relatively poor, and their per capita income is very poor. They are suffering from lots of issues pertaining to this infrastructure. Forget about sustainable infrastructure. The whole African region, Asia Pacific region, they are suffering from this uh, uh, lack of infrastructural development. Today, I was I was going with one TEDx talk, and uh, uh, with some data, it was said that uh, we are seven times even Africa, seven eight eight times. Uh, uh, what we can say? What uh, seven times uh, behind? the way uh, um, developed countries are developing their infrastructure. But now with the help of China, with the help of other nations, Africa is also growing. But that that development is again uh, not with the sink of our environmental policies, not with the sink of United Nations environmental policy. 
that is for the exploitation of resources the news is there the construction of ports the construction of ports the construction of sea ports for for exchange of goods and for trade uh, uh, most of the times uh, they are for the economic development they they are not in sync with the environmental development so development of infrastructure infrastructure is important but it should be as per the requirement of the community as per the requirement of the population right so if we, i talk about the infrastructure development the basic if i talk about africa the basic infrastructure development is the need of our they don't require big big uh, uh, you know uh, units they need roti kapra and makan so our infrastructural this the government agencies the international agencies must focus on the basic infrastructure development right so uh, this infrastructure development has governance environmental sustainability and social sustainability so social sustainability is very important I, as i have already discussed as i have already told you that invest in education invest in healthcare facilities invest in in you know food security see the developed nations they are talking about nutritional security they talk about how much nutrition a body needs in per day but still in india or in in, in developing nations we are still talking about the food security our food security is not uh, even achieved though we have enough uh, stories we have uh, food corporation of india godams are there but uh, we don't have enough uh, uh, stories sometimes we have to import from the other countries even the grain the, the grain grains is uh, imported uh, uh, from the other countries so uh, it has to be it has to be uh, remembered it has to be that how we can promote the agricultural infrastructure agriculture the infrastructure in agriculture agriculture sector is a need of our because uh, around 70 60 70 percent of our indian population and of india and around 60 70 percent in the developing countries they are dependent on agriculture and allied activities so agriculture development is equally important right and there are uh, some developmental process in, in infrastructure development processes are there so uh, if i talk about the processes uh, there are a few modes uh, first is your altering mode means if there are already some infrastructure existed so what we can do we can alter it we can redo it and we can enhance the productivity of the uh, particular uh, any infrastructure second is expanding mode suppose that uh, uh, an infrastructure is existing and we have to expand it suppose that a train line uh, which was up to jammu and kashmir it was extended to udampur and then srinagar so it was extended so this is the second uh, uh, you can say uh, development process in which what we do we extend whatever services exist we try to extend it for a larger uh, population for the larger benefit of the people right third is abandonment mode abandonment mode is like uh, if uh, any infrastructure which has completed its uh, you know life span or which which has which has proved its uh, utility and now is is old and now it is defunct what we can do we can abandon it then old bridge like the old buildings uh, now you can see uh, while traveling in the train you can see the cabins lots of cabins indian railways has constructed new cabins and they have abandoned the old cabins signal cabins system along the railway track and the last is uh, archiving mode archiving mode is also very important there are there are few buildings which were earlier they were in use but now they are just kept for archiving just like museums are there taj mahal is there humayun ka maqbara is there uh, museum of uh, Calcutta is there, uh, Salar Jang Museum is there. So lots of uh, 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 infrastructure which were existed, they, they were operational in previously, but now they are used for entertainment or tourism or for archiving purpose, right? So this you have to uh, see and see this uh, one more thing which I wanted to discuss that these projects are very important and these uh, these infrastructure can be developed in many phases the first phase is like project mode uh, what we can do we can go in one go and whatever we have conceived whatever 
uh, has to be uh, uh, constructed. We can construct in one go. Second is phase mode manner. Uh, what we can do, we can decide uh, that one phase will be completed in uh, after in two years. Second phase will be comp completed in three years. Like that manner, like Delhi Metro is a very good example of the phase manner. Now in so many phases, almost all the Delhi is now covered under this uh, uh, Delhi Metro scheme. Not only Delhi, uh, the good now, and Noida and Faridabad, they have also been included in that. So phase manner is one mode. Parallel mode is uh, uh, is another uh, example of this uh, development projects. Like you can see the development of uh, uh, you can say the railway lines. Uh, when you will go, when you will tra travel from Delhi to Bhopal, you will say there is a freight corridor. Go government is constructing different lines, railway lines. At the same time, uh, uh, one freight line is also uh, constructed in PPP mode, public pri uh, private partnership mode. So government is also uh, infra uh, developing infrastructure at the same time, the uh, private sector, non-governmental organizations, they are also developing the uh, sector. So parallel mode is also very important. And there's this plunge mode in which large scale projects is being constructed, uh, looking at the different needs of uh, the people of any particular area like uh, and it has a very large projects like uh, I can say the expressway golden quadrilateral scheme uh, you can say Char Dham Yatra lots of projects have been now initiated in this government also and previously also lots of government had focused in in such issues right so uh, these are the developing infrastructure this this slide is very important please focus here uh, participants See, uh, we have this uh, sustainable infrastructure has four facets. So the first is uh, you can say is uh, your um, it it includes uh, uh, you can say supports inclusive growth. Uh, it enhances the basic uh, services. It promotes environmental sustainability. So first, I will start with the environmental sustainability. As you can see, uh, the small small blocks you can see they are the SDG sustainable development goals which are running since 2015 to 2030 uh, they will run they have 17 goals 169 targets and uh, we have a dream this uh, this uh, um, under this sustainable development goals we dream that we are going to make this world a better place hunger free place poverty free place with better sustainable infrastructure, with gender equality and all. So in that, we see how this sustainable infrastructure is fitted. So uh, first is, is promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem, there are two ecosystems. One is aquatic and second is terrestrial. So terrestrial ecosystem is very important, the land ecosystem. And we have diff under terrestrial ecosystem also, we have different level, like different ecosystem, mountain ecosystem is there. Then you have desert ecosystem, cryosphere, lots of ecosystems are there that has to be, we have to develop our infrastructure in such a way that this terrestrial ecosystem services should not, the services of this terrestrial ecosystem should not hamper, should not be diminished, right? The second is conserve and conserve and sustainable use of marine resources, goal 14. See, first is land resource, second is your seawater or marine resources. We have to conserve our sustainable use and marine resources. I have already given you the example of the coast, the Andhra coast and Odisha coast. So we have to develop our, you know, uh, our infrastructures, infrastructure in such a way that it should not uh, uh, affect the biodiversity or the hope spot. Like hot spots are there. Similarly, hope spots are also there. In the in the sea, uh, in small small islands uh, where biodiversity is very rich, these spots are called as hope spots. So we have to conserve the hope spots also. Suppose that these hope spots are now converted into tourism uh, destination, tourism places. So we have to take care of that hope spots uh, for uh, while uh, development of this infrastructure. So. That way you have to see climate change and inspect climate change has uh, touched almost everything under the sun. So uh, uh, our infrastructure should be developed in such a way that has the lesser impact on 
of the climate change right so climate change has to be linked in in our developmental projects and we have to see that what kind of progression is there what kind of climate change what kind of you know uh, weather and climate pattern has to be there uh, is going to you know there, what kind of shift in climate and weather conditions is going to happen in near future in accordance with that we have to develop our infrastructure next is ensure sustainable consumption and production system i have already uh, talked about the sustainable consumption we don't have to be greedy we have to we have to take uh, uh, whatever is required uh, minimal requirement optimal requirement has to be full from fulfilled have to be taken from uh, from our nature and resources and then make cities and human settlement resilient and sustainable this is very important because 50 percent of our humanity lives in uh, urban cities and uh, our cities has to be livable our cities has to be sustainable right urban flooding and lots of uh, urban flooding as well as disasters like earthquake and all they are going to make huge loss not make things are happening huge loss have been recorded since last two three decades as the intensity and frequency of disaster is increasing uh, uh, many folds so our infrastructure should be in such a way that it has lesser impact on our environment and during disaster or the, during any uh, natural calamity the loss is minimal not only the human loss or ecosystem services should be also be uh, uh, affected in a very minimal manner so uh, the uh, now i will move to the next one enhances access to basic services so uh, uh, first is end poverty in all forms from everywhere there are majority of the people uh, in developing countries or third world nations they are poor and uh, they don't have uh, equal opportunity to 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 stand with the other developed nations so poverty should end hunger and food security should be achieved in, and nutrition uh, security should also be uh, prioritized in governmental policies ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all this is very important healthy lives and well-being social well-being economic well-being the well-being the the you know personal well-being that is very important so this these these are the points which talks about the equality right uh in short quality education and learning opportunities for all so uh, uh no one can deny this fact that education and learning and wisdom is the key uh many key solutions for all the problems which we face today achieve gender equality yes very important gender equality is uh, like uh, we see in infrastructural development, we see majority of the people are male. Why male? Females are equally equipped. So they should also be given equal opportunity while going for any development project. Their role there, they should also be trained. They should also be, there should be equal participation of workers, workforce from both the gender male and female right so gender equality is also there ensure availability of water and sanitation for all right when i uh, talk about this water water is uh, very important uh, issue sanitation and water is uh, uh, is very poor especially in the african nations or in the desert ecosystem or in the cold desert in the mountainous area you'll see that uh, uh, females are fetching uh, no, uh, water from two, three, five kilometers. The natural springs, which were which were used to supply the, you know, drinking water, they are now mm, drying up. They are not giving their sponge action as has been stopped. They are not uh, supplying the water. So we have to we have to give special emphasis and focus on the 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 social infrastructure, the water water infrastructure. How we can how we can uh, provide the infrastructure. Uh, so what uh, the pipeline infrastructure or how we can provide the water availability to masses and the last is uh, supports inclusive growth see inclusive growth is very important until unless we 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 integrate everything nothing exists in isolation right so uh, uh, we we have to promote productive employment and decent work for all 
see uh, until and unless we all work together we all earn handsome income and and per capita income this world is not going to see the bright future so all has to be promoted not only the few groups like in today's world we see only few business tycoons exist throughout the world 80% of the wealth is just concentrated in 20%'s hand and 20% uh, uh, this 80% population just have 20% of the uh, natural resources and wealth. This is a uh, rough idea, but you can see, you can visualize uh, uh, what in what kind of uh, planet we live. Okay. So uh, in this, uh, we have to promote resilience, sustainable industrialization, and faster innovation. Innovations I have innovation I have already discussed. Next is reduce inequality uh, within and among countries. Uh, there should be free flow of exchange, exchange of goods, money, ideas, and uh, promote peaceful and inclusive society. Uh, peaceful and inclusive society is very important until and unless there is a peace. Uh, majority of the countries, they spend majority of their GDP on, on arms and army. What is the need of arms and army? If we should spend more on our education and social infrastructure, economic infrastructure, rather than putting the money in military and warfare um, strategies. So peaceful, uh, if, we peace, if we live in a peaceful world and a calm world, peace world, uh, that is more productive. That, uh, that infrastructure, that kind of infrastructure, that kind of framework has to be provided. And the last is re- uh, revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Global partnership, institutional partnership is very important for sustainable infrastructure. So I think uh, this is, I have some more slides, but majority of the things I have covered, this economic and financial sustainability, which I uh, just discussed, and economic environmental uh, sustainability, including climate resilience is, is also very important. Uh, I can provide this uh, uh, PPT, you people can uh, uh, can read it uh, because we are uh, running short of time and I have to take your queries also. So this is social sustainability and institutional sustainability is there. So uh, you can go through this, that how social sustainability works and how institutional sustainability works. Like in, in, in most of the poor countries, this institutional sustainability is uh, is absent or very poor. Whereas in the developed nations, this institutional sustainability, social sustainability is very strong, right? Uh, so uh, this, uh, I'm skipping. Uh, this infrastructure indicators are there. Uh, this indicators are develop better projects, supports upstream institutional strengthening, establish clear financial ground rules and standardized tools and indicators. So there are certain indicators which I have read it out. So uh, for sustainable infrastructure, these indicators has to be taken care of. Each and equal participation from society is very much needed. Uh, and we have to give uh, you know, equal proportion, equal right to to all the groups, uh, whether they are well from the well-off uh, uh, community or whether they are from the poor community, right? Uh, so, uh, not discussing this. Uh, this, this is uh, 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 this has to be understood. So, this sustainable infrastructure is uh, which are the the blocks which I have showed earlier, uh, they are the these are the same things in a very concise way, concise uh, manner. So sustainable infrastructure has four facets, economic and financial sustainability, social sustainability, environmental sustainability, including climate resilience and institutional sus sustainability. So under this economic uh, and financial sustainability, we have to see that what kind of economic, what kind of uh, uh, financial support is there to develop the infrastructure from where we are getting the funds to develop the, uh, so lots of agencies are there, World Bank is there, Asian Development Banks are there, SARC is there, so regional corporations are there at global level, 
global finance companies uh, financial institutions are there which supports uh, you know through their finance and they loan uh, money to develop sustainable infrastructure right social sustainability is very important community engagement for poverty reduction human and labor rights cultural preservation these are under the social sustainability education health all all are under this uh, social sustainability and this is very important until and unless we educate people until and unless we we make our population fit healthy the productivity is not going to be increased so uh, that has to be seen and uh, uh, there is one index called uh, social uh, progress index i think social progress index uh, 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 which talks about the economic profitability uh, we talk about the development as well as the social development what kind of development is there and what kind of social development is there what kind of per capita income is there and in relation to that what kind of social uh, 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 progress or social sustainability is there that you you people can check it out further uh, next is environmental sustainability and climate resilience I'm, i have talked a lot about this i have talked about disaster pollution is one issue uh, those who are living in this northern india they can see that during the winters after diwali what happens and this uh, aq this pm level and spm suspended particle materials are in uh, uh, is very high uh, which is uh, unhealthy which is not good for our health and according to one report by uh, terry uh, uh, terry and cac uh, they have conducted a joint research they have said that uh, we are in delhi uh, if i take example of delhi uh, a person is inhaling 10 cigarettes per day passive smoking is being done so uh, you can see um, that how it has to be crubbed how it has to be the issue of pollution uh, is taking is taken care of and the last is institutional sustainability which is very important uh, global national strategies are there I, ha I have already told global organizations regional organizations and state organizations so we have to work in sync we have to work in collaboration with all these organizations we have to go for the capacity building we have to go for the institution building training programs and uh, for the poor at grassroots level we have to make policies uh, uh, and what with bottoms up approach we have to work at bottom right we have to think globally and act locally there's a term called global think globally act locally we have to act at local level to build sustainable infrastructure at ground at ground at local level then only we are whatever we are thinking like big goals sustainable development goals and all we can achieve so that's why i'm skipping uh, and uh, in last uh, i can see that uh, this uh, sustainable infrastructure is a need of our and without sustainable infrastructure we are we are not going to our productivity is going to be reduced and the cost the environmental cost is going to be uh, going to be increased in future so we have to come out with innovations we have to come out with the inventions we have to come out with the nature based solutions we have to come out with the indigenous infrastructural model and we don't have to you know we don't have to impose the modern techniques we don't have to impose the western model everywhere there are mountains there are you know desert areas where there are indigenous development model indigenous techniques indigenous infrastructure are working very nicely so we have to promote their own knowledge system also in a very better way so that we can uh, document them we can keep record of them and we can give the give respect to them and their uh, their forefathers who have developed all these for a sustainable world for a sustainable future so this is all from uh, my side uh, sorry i am a little late uh, but hope hope i have uh, covered the topic thank you over to you sir jasrita 